Parliament will be voting tomorrow on an important bill that could affect the lives of Canadians, particularly those suffering with mental illness. The rapid expansion of MAID, which stands for Medical Assistance in Dying, is raising some concerns, particularly since the bill is attempting to expand the eligibility of assisted dying to those who qualify solely based on mental illness. But there is another bill, Bill C-314, which seeks to remove the mental illness eligibility to qualify for MAID. My next guest is hoping this bill passes tomorrow and is here to break it down. David Goretsky is the president and CEO of the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada. He joins me now from Ottawa. David, welcome back to Bridge City News. So great to have you here once again with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so first of all, for any viewers who may be unfamiliar with your organization, EFC, what can you maybe briefly tell us about it? What's, what's it all about? Sure. Well, the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada is the National Association of Evangelical Denominations, uh, post-secondary Christian schools, uh, organizations, and congregations. And we represent something around 2 million Canadians, uh, Evangelical Canadians from uh, coast to coast. Interesting. Okay, now uh, the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada has for many years been tackling issues of faith in Canada, right? Including this MAID bill, this medical assistance in dying, commonly referred to as assisted suicide or euthanasia. So why, David, is this bill at the forefront of your focus right now? Well, as, everyone, as your viewers will know that uh, medical assistance in dying or euthanasia is already legal in Canada and has been for a number of years. Uh, a couple years ago, um, it was um, a bill was passed that would now extend uh, medical assistance in dying to people with mental illness uh, alone with no other conditions. And that was supposed to take place in March 2023, open up uh, to March 2023. There was a delay to that and an ex extra year given to kind of prepare the system for, for that new regime. And so March 2024 is when this is supposed to all take effect. So it's already it's already law. It's already to take effect. But this bill that's before Parliament right now, uh, Bill C-314, it's a private member's bill. And if this bill were passed uh, by Parliament, then a, the a medical assistance for dying for people with mental illness alone would be stopped. That, that would be reversed. And so it's a really crucial bill at a really crucial moment uh we're just months away from that that deadline of march 2024. yeah definitely it's uh it's coming upon us so quickly uh what have you been hearing from mps on this issue there's mps right across the political spectrum from all four parties who are uh, having uh reservations about opening up made uh, for medical illness alone so this is not uh, uh just one party or two parties this seems to be some concern right across the board and uh, even, even from those some people who are supporting made generally uh euthanasia generally they're concerned that opening up for mental illness uh we're just not ready and, and they're they're even uh, asking questions about whether it ever should be opened up to people with me with mental illness alone so there, there seems to be concern right across the spectrum. Okay, uh, and so you're you're hearing from people uh, in the Liberal Party, NDP, Bloc MPs as well, Bloc Quebecois. Yes, we've heard anecdotal evidence that there's concerns right across. Yes, from all parties. Okay, interesting. Not, not necessarily at, at the party platform levels or the sure. official party stances, but MPs from all parties. We've heard uh, stories that they they are saying yes, we are very concerned about this going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, tomorrow, October 17th, uh, there's supposed to be a, a vote. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, October 18th, tomorrow. 18th, uh, sorry. So, yeah. <laughs> Today is the 17th, isn't it? It is the 17th. Uh, yeah, so if, if this vote goes forward, um, this is at the second reading of a bill. So the first reading has already gone through. That just uh, The bill is just introduced that the second reading, if this uh, is passed at second reading, that means that the bill then goes to committee. And so then there's various committees that meet and begin to uh, assess the bill and, and bring back forward recommendations, perhaps to changes to the bill. Uh, but, but if the bill does pass the second reading vote, that would be a good sign because that means that parliament is, is seriously taking, taking uh, reference of what's going on and, and saying, well, we need to really talk about whether 
this is in fact a good thing for for us to be going ahead with as a nation. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so if Bill C three fourteen fails to pass, then uh, like you were saying, it'll move on to that parliamentary committee for study, right? No, if the bill fails to pass tomorrow, so this is a bill that actually says uh, stop made for mental illness in March. If the bill fails the second reading, fails to pass the second reading, the bill is dead. And then therefore, in, then, therefore at that point, um, we can just presume that uh, as of March 2024, made for mental illness will take effect. So will this go to Senate yet as, as well? Uh, could they amend the bill to stop that mental illness eligibility if this continues on down the road? So, so if this bill passes the second reading, it will go to committee and then it has to be voted by parliament, uh, by the House of Commons. If it's, if it's passed at the House of Commons, then it would go to Senate uh, for uh, the next level of approvement, approval. So you got to think about it. Re re remember that this bill is actually a bill to stop made for mental illness. This is not a bill to have mental illness availability for made for mental illness. That's already law. It's already law that people can, as of March, apply for euthanasia for mental illness alone. This bill is trying to stop that, right? If the bill passes, that's a success in, the, in that regard. It, it will be uh, made for mental illness. What are the proponents of MAID saying? Uh, why do they believe that it's a positive thing for individuals to qualify for MAID just based solely on mental illness alone? Right. Well, there's, uh, you know, the, uh, there's kind of two lines of, of thought there. I think that most of the proponents would be saying, on the one hand, um, uh, people are autonomous individuals and should be making choices about their own life. Uh, so I think it's really setting up kind of a contrast between a worldview that says individuals have full autonomy over their life and their death versus many other people uh, like the EFC who are saying all lives are sacred. Uh, all, all people, all individuals are made in God's image. All people are loved by God. And it's really not up to us uh, to make a decision about our, our own death. Um, we, we, we just see that um, as kind of the fundamental difference between the two. Mm -hmm. The bill on uh, the mental illness was actually raised as a, uh, as a possibility by some proponents because they saw um, uh, it as discriminatory, not being able to access uh, euthanasia on the basis of mental illness. And so that was the original challenge was that uh, it was a discriminatory thing. Okay. So that, that from a legal perspective, that's what they were, they were talking about. Okay. Um, of course, it's, there's, there's probably other views uh, other than that, but that, I think those would be kind of the fundamental views from the proponents. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so what kind of feedback then are you hearing from physicians, if any? Are, are they supportive or against made based solely on mental illness? Well, of course, like like with uh, all things, there's a, a mixture of opinion. Uh, just like the general population, there's those who are for and those who are against. But we are actually hearing quite a bit of reservation, especially amongst the mental health and psychiatric communities, uh, and saying, you know, uh, number one, even, even from some of the psychiatrists and specialists, mental health specialists, who are actually in favor of MAID in, in kind of a general kind of way, are expressing some serious reservation about whether this, this is a way forward. Um, the former head of the Canadian Psychiatric Association actually put out an open letter to MPs. And although he is uh, in favor of MAID in, in sort of in principle, he's seriously opposed to MAID for mental illness, saying that it will, um, it will target uh, vulnerable, vulnerable people. When people have, um, you know, various types of mental illness, this is it precisely at the time when they need help, uh, and and uh, offering MAID as a solution to a mental illness seems completely wrong-headed. And this this is coming from the head of the Canadian Psychiatric Association. Mm, fascinating. So, if Bill C three fourteen, if if this doesn't pass tomorrow and and it continues on into the spring, and uh, right. it becomes a thing, <laughs> um, yeah. If somebody wanted to, uh, you know, take part in made and they have mental illness, are there certain qualifications in terms of like, well, you need, uh, you know, a psychiatric evaluation or this or that? Do you know anything about that, David? Yes. So this, the safeguards, there really are very few, if any, safeguards left. And this is part of the alarm that the psychiatric community is actually raising. 
uh, psychiatric and mental health communities because there really are no safeguards. If someone um, uh, goes, for example, to a general physician, uh, a family doctor with mental illness and requests this, uh, there does need to be some kind of assessment with, with the person, with not necessarily with a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but just someone, a mental health specialist. And if that mental health uh, specialist actually uh, okayed that request, that person could uh, be eligible then for, for MAID um, within 90 days of the request. So within 90 days, they can. So what, what, what we're really pointing out is, is that in, in so many cases with mental health issues, um, even to get an appointment with a specialist is difficult in Canada right now. There's wait lists of, of a year and more than a year just to get into uh, mental health specialists. And uh, it, when you consider that um, someone who's you know, full of anxiety or depression or suicidal ideation um, could go to a doctor and uh, have a preliminary assessment and be approved for MAID within 90 within days. three months, yeah. As opposed right. to the long wait list of trying to get in to see a counselor. Exactly. Oh. And it, that, that, that points to the vulnerability of, of many people and how, how vulnerable people will be who, who, you know, are desperate for some help perhaps can't get the help either because they just have no access and that's a significant problem. And for many people who don't have insurance for, for you know, some, sometimes people just don't even have additional insurance uh, to cover some of the extra specialties that are, that are required. So we feel that made for mental illness is targeting uh, vulnerable people. Oh, absolutely. What are you hearing from organizations that work with and assist those with mental illness? Are they concerned that this will place them in a vulnerable position? I mean, they are so vulnerable. Yes. So so in particularly, uh, the EFC has worked, uh, especially with the, um, uh, the, the Christian Medical and Dental Association. We've worked with disability groups and mental health groups. And uh, again, although it's not unanimous across the board, there are significant sectors of the Canadian population who are are opposed to the idea of offering uh, euthanasia for, for mental illness. The EFC just did some polling ourselves, some national polling recently, and we discovered that uh, well, well into 60% of Canadians agree that even if made for mental illness were to be made available, uh, it should be only as a very last resort after all uh, therapeutic options have been exhausted. Uh, in Netherlands, for example, where where euthanasia is also legal, uh, a physician's not able to provide uh, euthanasia for a patient who requests this until they are convinced that they have exhausted all of the mental health therapies. That is not the case in the Canadian situation. There's no requirement for a person to receive mental health therapy. There's no requirement to, to show that they've exhausted the mental health therapies. Uh, all they have to do is qualify by by someone who signs off and says that uh, yes, they have a uh, a mental health condition. Yeah, oh, it's scary. So, uh, David, yeah. if a viewer is concerned about this, what what can they do? Is it still helpful to send letters or make phone calls to your MP? Absolutely. Given the, given the fact that the vote is tomorrow on Bill uh, three fourteen for the second reading, uh, that it's important to have that that second reading passed. And so letters are probably going to be a little bit slow at this point, but you can email and you can phone your MP. And even if you don't uh, get a, a personal phone call with your MP, you can leave a message on the recording machine. And that, that does count. They, they listen to those messages. And a phone call means a lot uh, coming into an MP's office. So I would, I would recommend viewers who are um, concerned, they should call, call their MP, leave a message. If they get to talk to the MP, wonderful or at the very least, uh, send an email and ask them to support Bill 314. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I understand that the EFC is encouraging churches across Canada to join together this Sunday, October 22nd, to pray about the issue, right? Yes, we, we've launched a campaign. Uh, it's called Before It's Too Late campaign, and we've been uh, encouraging churches and congregations across the, the country to set aside a little bit of time on, on their services on October 22nd. We've got some uh, PowerPoints to and some videos that churches can use on our website, uh, even to take five, you know, seven minutes out of their service and and just uh, take some concerted time to pray about this. Um, we do believe that God still hears and still can answer our prayers. 
Okay. Well, David, we thank you so much for being with us today and, and sharing your, your knowledge about all of this. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us.